part three of our series for the Bessie Water Basin Project, Stormwater Project. Again, I'm Robert Smith, Town Manager. Um, you know, we've had a couple Zoom, we've had a Zoom call last night. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of the residents that live along this uh, roadway, uh, listened to their concerns, got their feedback. Because uh, again, the people that live on these roadways pretty much know how the water's been flowing because they've had to live it uh, and get used to it over the years. Um, so again, we're going to be focusing on east all the way to Bessie on that turn. So again, you're going to have the same type of um, concept but with a little bit of a variation. Uh, the variation is this, is that you're going to have a three foot shoulder, you're going to have an 18 foot uh, dirt roadway. As you can see, there's existing curbing and there's uh, infrastructure already in place. So the water line at the very end over there by Bessie. Uh, but we'll still be able to make sure that we get residents that are over here uh, portable water, either by doing it at underground or connecting it over here to make sure it's a loop system. Uh, but once we do with the uh, get into the actual nuts and bolts, because remember we're just at concept level, when we get to the actual design, we'll be able to design that six inch line and figure out how we're going to stub it out to each one of these properties over here. a chance to look at the concepts yet. Number one, it's on the agenda packet for the October 27th workshop, or you can go to the town's website and look at the projects and study section of the town website, and it has all of the, uh, not only all the videos, but it has also all of the uh, concepts, as well as the typical section. So again, this retention uh, pond is connected by all of these structures and all of these grates that you see over here on my um, left or right. Now, whenever we spoke about you know the positives and you know the negatives of piping, uh, one of the big negatives of piping is that the dirt's going to go somewhere, and the dirt will fill up these um, structures and we have to pump these out. So not only is it more costly for us to put in the structures, but it's also more costly as far as perpetual maintenance uh, to suck out the sand or whatever materials are in these structures. Um, and it's not like we can just put it back onto the properties because we have to make sure that we dump that in appropriate sites. Um, so there, each one of these structures has to be maintained, you know, if not quarterly, at least twice a year or as needed. Uh, but we make sure that we clear them out whenever we see that there's uh, either sediment that's made it all the way up to the piping um, or, you know, as part of our maintenance plan to make sure that we're ready for the hurricane season or the rainy season. The curbing that you see here, we'll be replacing that curbing. Um, you know, a lot of people complain about, you know, some of the cracking, some of the issues with the curbing. We're going to make sure that we uh, rip it up and then we fix it up as well. So you're still going to have the curbing over here. And you're going to have the 18 feet of dirt roadway and the three foot shoulder. And again, another uh, way to determine where the actual right of way starts is right here. So you can get a good feel of where the right of way starts because this is where uh, the town owns the property. In addition to that, as I said before, with the um, 8th and East Ave project that we're talking about um, far, as part of the Butler Basin, we have some area that is just to the south over here that we can move stuff if we need to to make sure that we're lessening the impacts to the residents that live on the north of East Ave. But again, since there's some infrastructure already here, we want to make sure that we utilize that as much as possible um, so we're not increasing the cost of the actual project. sure that we remove whatever encroachments we have on this property and actually maintain everything onto our own property. So when we wrap around the corner here, um, actually some of the town's uh, roadway actually encroaches onto uh, the property at 327. So we're going to shift it over a little bit 
And by doing that, we're probably going to have to go from the 18 feet standard to again the 16 foot standard. And the reason for that is, you know, again, for constraints, impacts, um, you are able to reduce it in certain areas and be able to articulate that to FEMA to make sure that they understand why you uh, went less than the standards. And they just need to make sure that it's a reasonable uh, explanation. And the fact of the matter is, is when you get to this area right here, it's kind of pinched in with where we are with right away. Um, we are looking at making some improvements over here as well, just like we were over on uh, 9th and uh, East Ave. I don't think we're going to be able to kind of tee this up, but what we can do is maybe shift this over a little bit, again, to get it off of this property over here. replacing whatever we take down um, because again Windermere is known for our tree canopy and we want to make sure that we're maintaining that um, but unfortunately with this tree right here um, from the fact that we have to move off of somebody else's property I really don't think that we're going to be able to save this tree uh, but we are looking to save as many trees as possible when we get further down on Bessie. Um, this video is pretty short because it's a short part of the phase but again uh, with this phase it's a little different from the other phases because we have the curbing already in place, we have the infrastructure in place, the 18 feet may go down to about 16 feet, but again, we're gonna to try to maintain this curb as much as possible uh, and move our prop move uh, away from other people's property into our actual right. So again, I'm Robert Smith. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, this is the part three of this set for the Bessie, or the Bessie Basin uh, Stormwater Grant Project. Uh, my number and contact information is right down here, so feel free to give me a call. Uh, and I hope to see you all on October 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, it's been advertised. It's going to be on Zoom. And, uh, you know, look, back, look forward to hearing back from you guys. So, again, appreciate it, and take care.